All right. Good afternoon, everyone. We are here with uh, well, quite quite famous people here internally for the Hannon Stone family. Uh, I want to welcome today to the treatment room, uh, Eric and Christiana Anthony from Greensboro, North Carolina. Eric and Christiana, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Uh, what's that? Excuse me? Thanks, Bob, for having us. No, no problem, Eric. You can uh, edit that out, Nicole. So, so we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about uh, you know all things uh, franchising at Hand and Stone here with Eric and Christiana, and uh, let's let's just get right to it because I know a lot of franchisees are going to be uh, speaking together about the things that they've accomplished and the things that uh, they've experienced over this pandemic time frame. And if you don't mind, let's start out with understanding your approach after you knew we were going to be heading into this situation when you were going to have to close your businesses and. And when I say your businesses, you are actually partners in, in four businesses and then an additional three outright, correct? Correct. So so obviously, you know, being a part owners and, and, and direct ownership with your own spas, how did you approach and, and implement? Um, well, how did you actually approach the shutdown when you knew that you were going to have to close your businesses? How did you all react to that? Please, please uh, take some time and share your experiences with us. Uh, after you found out you're going to have to shut down your businesses? Well, the first thing, when we knew that it was coming, we would have to shut down the businesses. What was our approach going to be? It's it's terrifying because our first thought is our employees. Um, what's going to happen to them? What are we going to do? How's that all going to work? And we were first and foremost concerned about their safety, the safety of the clients. So we were following to the T, of course, as we will when we reopen all of the corporate guidelines that were put in place. Um, we just took the approach of we're going to follow what our state mandates that we do. We actually closed a week before we had to because we and our staff was concerned about safety. And we knew that we had a lot going on that was the corporate was helping us with as far as what was coming down the pipeline, but we didn't know what it was. So the approach was to do what is in the best interest of your staff and what is the safest thing for everybody. And it was just a systematic decision. When we made that decision, our goal was to communicate it to the staff, to let them know we're here for them the entire time. We've been communicating with them almost weekly. The managers stayed on, so they were in weekly communication with the staff as well as clients that needed to, that we needed to get in touch with. So we felt like we did a really good job. There were, a, in the beginning, it was a lot of questions with unemployment, a lot of people needing help. And we did the best we could to be there for him. Corporate has been amazing with the weekly chain updates, keeping us updated about everything. And now that we're kind of seeing it come full circle, we're going to take the same approach, the same transitional approach as we're going to follow every protocol to the, to the guideline and make sure that the staff and the clients feel, ultimately, they feel safe about coming back. And we feel really good about it. You want to add That's good. That's great. Eric, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I, you know, obviously when you shut down uh, or any business, all, you know, all these hand and stones, there's this client interface around monthly EFTs and how are we going to handle that? Should we just terminate it all? Do we, you know, what do we do? How do we deal with the client? So we just took a very systematic approach to say, when a client calls, whatever they want to do, whatever's going to make them happy is what we'll do. Um, we did not try to uh, outthink the client. We just explained the options and took our time with each client to make sure their questions were answered. And I've seen a lot of Facebook posts about, you know, a client has put in a chargeback request after they asked for their stuff to be frozen or whatever. And, let, I'm going to get them. I'm going to get rid of all their packages and just, you know, I'm going to show them, you know, putting a charge back in fair. And I'd say do the opposite that, that you put yourself in the client's position. They're struggling. They have a lot going on. Just if they put a charge back in, just get rid of that one package and live with it. We're lucky that, that we have reoccurring at revenue and to think that you're going to get a hundred percent of it is a, a little unrealistic in a pandemic like this. So um, client first has been our approach and, and, and not that we're not putting our employees first. It's, it, to me, it's two different things. 
we put our employees first on every employee issue and we put our clients first on every client issue. And, and that's how we've run it for this time. And, and we still, we still feel like we're doing the right things. Although I, I, I'm sure everyone out there that's in this you know, situation is questioning every day. Could I have done something better? or should, Could I do something more? I would just continue for everybody to share and, and, and do the things that, that we're doing and others are doing, which is listening to our clients and listening to our employees and, and making good decisions with, with those two groups of people. Well, it's, it's a great example to follow there. And, and, and obviously from an ownership perspective, I mean, these are people, you know, your employees and clients that you've developed relationships with, and that's kind of where your mind goes first. Right. And then, and then you're kind of a, on a reaction from a reactionary standpoint, you have to do what's right from a business perspective. And that always involves financials. Can you share with us your experiences with maybe government assistance or working with a landlord? Um, and obviously with seven spas, you've probably had, uh, a long list of items to, uh, to handle. So, so if, if you don't mind sharing some of those, I, I mean, I, I know we're not going to get to all of them, but if you can give us a broad overview, that would be really appreciative. Well, I th you know, when it, when it first started, it was the EIDL, which turned out to be tied to the PPP. Originally, it sounded like there was going to be this $10,000 windfall, but it's all kind of tied into the PPP. But we did apply for PPP for all seven stores. We made one mistake on one store that we didn't get a, enough money is a very convoluted process. I'm sure everyone out there that's gotten money spent a ton of time doing it and people that haven't are still spending a ton of time trying to get it. Um, it's a great program when you get it and, and you know you're going to open. It's not that great a program if you don't know you're going to open because you're just deferring the pain to a later day. Um, as far as landlords, all our landlords, they, nobody did it the same. They all either gave forgiven rent or pushed it out or added to the end. Um, they were very, every single landlord was very generous. I, I don't know uh, Hand and Stone's position on this, but we do have some leverage in this situation. No landlord that works so hard to keep tenants like Hand and Stone that pay their bills and and do all the things and grow like we grow, do they want them to disappear because they want to get rent during this pandemic? So, you know, I, I feel like you got to be, able, you know, use it to your favor and just say, listen, this is what would work for us. This is what's going to keep us in this center. This is what's going to keep us from having to close our business. If you can defer the rent to the time that your balance sheet and P&L says that you can handle it. Um, you know, I think the people that are getting EFTs, reasonable number of EFTs are able to to really probably pay the rent anyway because you have no services going against it. But I think those are the kinds of things we're doing. The unemployment side of this has been probably the most disappointing thing. We have employees that still haven't gotten their unemployment checked um, and they followed all the process. We've stayed on the phone on hold for 14 hours waiting for people. Uh, when, when we first started this whole process, um, we spent probably, you know, 100 hours just trying to get through to unemployment and help our, our employees. So it's, that's been the most challenging part. The PPP, is a, it sounds like a great thing, but documentation is key. Make sure you have it all documented clearly. It's still a, not 100% clear what's forgiven. Um, you know, Todd may have some positions on it. Hannon Stone may have some positions and other people out there might have it. I would find a trusted CPA and a trusted bank and make sure that you are ahead of the game and your documentation and your processes. So don't don't wait till the seventh week and say, oh, my gosh, I need to spend all this money and, and try to do something that won't fall in the guidelines under um, the, the forgiveness part. So as long as you follow those guidelines and 75% of its payroll, you should be pretty good. So those are good programs. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we we're happy to have it. We're, we feel uh, very fortunate to have gotten it. We work very hard to get it. Unemployment, pretty much a disaster. Got it. What has been, I mean, obviously there's been hurdles, right? And you've overcome a lot of that stuff, but what's been the biggest surprise to you when, because I, I know some of your staff and you've got a great you've got great teams. What's been the biggest surprise to you from you know working through this with your teams as uh, as you look back uh, 
you know, coming full circle here? I, it doesn't surprise us at all. Um, it's our staff. Our director and our managers have been working nonstop from their home safely uh, since since we had to close. And it's a nonstop job because the staff still has questions. They have concerns. The clients still have questions. They have concerns. So that's been the biggest thing. We could have never done it without them. So we give them all the credit. They have been on top of everything. So I guess it it it's heartwarming to know that in times like these, you either come together or you fall apart. And we have proven that we call ourselves the Hand and Stone community. That's all our managers, our staff. When we do letters to them, it's always, you are our Hand and Stone family, you're our community, and we're gonna be just fine. We just have to take it day by day. So I think the biggest surprise has been, and it's not generally surprise us, but you know, we've come through closer than we ever were, and they are just all amazing. Can't say enough wonderful things about them. I, you know, for me, I was the biggest surprise probably this whole time was the day that we decided we were going to bring them back. We knew there was a hurdle with the money that, that they were getting through unemployment. The people that were getting were getting this, you know, thousand dollars and all this, you know, I mean, the six hundred dollars plus other uh, benefits of being unemployed. And then to come back and say, hey, we're going to give you your job and you're going to get the average salary you were making. I thought we'd have way more pushback than we did, but I would say maybe 3% of the staff pushed back on that. And the rest of the people were just very thankful and appreciative of how hard we had worked to bring them back to work. I don't say that lightly in the sense that we did communicate a lot with them ahead of time and they knew we were working very hard for them. So, you know, as people are listening to this, our success there was, um, not over communicating it's not, and not sending all these, you know, we love you. You're the greatest messages. We were keeping them updated with the facts and information that we knew and what we were doing to prepare, you know, to reopen and that, that we want to make sure that we open very strong and that we keep our team that we think, you know, our teams across our stores, we think they're the best in hand and stone. And I'm sure all of us think that. And, um, so it was extremely surprising that nobody really pushed back as hard on the thousand dollars, six hundred dollars, and thousand uh, dollar things that they, people were getting. What changes from a day to day perspective on how you do business going forward after this? Everything. Um, it is a massive amount of stuff that has to go in place from the protocols, the interaction with clients what we do when the staff comes in. Um, we've already got, we've, we're, we're in North Carolina, so we're only in phase one. We hope that we will be open, able to open in phase two, but we do not have a definite date. We're hoping by June 1st, but our staff's already on it. They're already bringing in employees one by one safely with masks on to go through all the safety guidelines that they have to be checked off for. It's mandatory before they can come back to work all the protocols that corporate has been that's put in place it's important for everyone to follow them to the t so that we stay safe and we, we're safe we're going to be as safe as a doctor's office get your supplies ordered make sure if things are back ordered that you've got uh you know work with corporate on a work work around for that and i think for us the most important thing is to do it right do it right and that's what we're working on and the staff has been amazing and the returning staff um, coming in and getting their paperwork done because they're we can't give them the answers. We just have told them it's a different world. Ever since the first chain webinar, we have said to them things will be different. There will be new protocols in place. So get ready for it. It's what has to happen. We're going to follow it and it will make the biggest difference. Our clients want to come back. We have people walking up to the door. When are you going to open? So we're very, very confident that people will feel safe they'll feel safe and our staff will feel safe enough that we're doing everything we can. Todd said something in one of the chain emails that I really liked. He said, you're not opening without risk, but you are minimizing that risk as much as possible with everything that corporate has mandated from their proper medical resources. Um, and it's, it's a lot, but we're going to learn from the spas that have, have opened before us as well. So we're going to have an easier time. Glad we weren't the first ones. 
Yeah. Yeah. We've seen some really positive results out there. I mean, people have, uh, have really been extremely pleased. And, you know, I think a lot of people are pleasantly surprised at that and, and, and anxious to, to open. So um, speaking of the franchisees out there now, I mean, you know, obviously you're coming up on uh, reopening your businesses and uh, having gone through this with, uh, with as many spas as, as you all are involved in, what kind of advice would you give other owners that uh, maybe don't have the experience that you do? Well, I, the, the best advice that we can give people is before you open, is to get in and do the things in the spa that you need to do. Um, clean it, get it ready, you know, make sure that everything is organized. Um, from a financial perspective, we went in and took this opportunity to clean up some things in financial, on the financial side of the house, make sure that that looked right. Um, we, you know, we had an opportunity to look at some of the data within Millennium and clean some things up within Millennium. So there's a, a little bit of, um, housekeeping that this gave us an opportunity to do. We're replacing the floors in both our spas because during this time when we're down, um, you know, it's it's going to cost us X amount of money, but it would we would have had to shut down for three to four days to do this, uh, this kind of work. So if you have opportunities of, of repairs and things like that, that's some advice I'd say while you're down. When you're coming back up, I just, I, I'll go back to what I said earlier. The front desk and the P, everybody that deals with a client has got to put themselves in the client's shoes. It's a lot like a, a video we shared with Bob a, a while back is you need to understand the client's perspective. A lot of these guys will have financial uh, problems that aren't going to go away just because we opened our store back. And so work with them, find a way to to give them the comfort that maybe now is not the time that they can come in. We'll take care of it. We'll freeze your membership for longer. And then when you're ready to come back, it'll be there for you. I think you have to make extraordinary efforts in the client interaction at this point. And our employees have to be accountable and responsible to follow these protocols. It's, it's, it's not optional to um, just because you don't think you're going to get it to do things even in the spa that clients can't see with other employees. We have to all live and breathe this new world that we live in. And, you know, you can't, you just can't give people enough uh, motivation to do that right. I mean, they need to understand the impacts of what may happen. And so this is a time for people to be accountable, to, to follow these rules. And, I think clients just need to have the comfort that when they walk in, they know everything that we're doing is for is to keep them safe. And we need to put the same protocols in place for our employees to make sure they know we're keeping them safe. You probably won't see Christiana and I walk into the spas a lot because we don't want to add another element of some, you know, someone coming in. So we're trusting our managers to, to lead and run those spas. Um, without us being there day to day overlooking everything because we're just two more people that could potentially have it. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you want to add some things to that? No, I think you covered that perfectly. Well, um, that's a that's a great transition to our last question because since you're not going to be in your spas on a, a frequent basis, this is your opportunity to kind of uh, look the camera in the eye to talk to all of your employees and your staff and uh, if there was a message you want to send to them, what would that be? Um, I think it's it's what we've said all along. We're in this together. We care. The, the, the folks that work for us, we're not in the spa every day. We trust our director and our managers to manage the day-to-day. -day. We don't want to be in there micromanaging. They do it much better than we do. But it's important to us that all of our staff knows that we care a lot. They're family. So we are with them 100% during this process and we will do whatever it takes to make sure that it goes well and that we have a strong reopening and that we stay as strong as we ever have. And we are 100% confident that that's going to happen. So if we had one message to convey to them, it's that we appreciate them. We're so thankful. So thankful for each and every one of them. Wow. Well, that, that is a great place to leave it. And, uh, on behalf of Nicole and I and, and, and the rest of the team at corporate, we just want to say thank you to y'all. Uh, you know, we learn from each other all the time, but uh, you guys have shown exemplary leadership throughout this time. And uh, thank you for being, uh, Eric and Christiane, thank you for being in the treatment room and spending some time with us today.
Well, thank corporate because I, I think we would not have known what to do. This is when you're thankful to be in a franchise. Yeah. If we if we weren't in a franchise and the two of us had to figure this out, we just pretty much have shut shut the place down. So um, I, I'm sure I speak for every franchisee out there. We we are so appreciative of everything that um, all the teams and you know I mean I don't know if, how many emails have been sent out, but it seems like thousands been they've been the only reason I feel that we are in a position to come back and come back strong. And, and we are very thankful for that. Yeah. Stronger together. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Christiana. You guys have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Take care.